Hey guys, it's Drew again. Today it seems like the only place that people know where to get cars are either through card shows or eBay. But one of the places that uh, there are great opportunities to find unique and amazing things are auction houses. And today I want to show off five of my most favorite pickups I ever won through auction houses. So let's check it out. So like I said, I went through a time where auction houses were just such a big deal, and they still are today, but you used to be able to find some amazing deals, especially with smaller auction houses that uh, that sort of were flying under the radar, but there's also huge auction houses. Now today, you kind of know certain ones like REA Auctions or Heritage Auctions, and they're great auction houses with insane stuff, but there was a lot of uh, smaller dollar items that you could pick up, and I thought, you know what, I wanted to show off a couple of different things that I don't think I've ever even shown on my channel before that uh, that I won through an auction house. So as you guys know me and know my channel, you would know that I'm a card collector and you know I like the magazines. I've got these beautiful magazines up behind me, but I like unique and kind of cool stuff too. And one of the things I found in an auction house, and I don't think, I think it was $10 or $12 plus some shipping, uh, plus the fees or whatever. It wasn't very much, but it was really cool. And as soon as I saw it listed, I instantly knew what I wanted to do if I found this, or if I was able to win this, which I did. And what it was is a magazine. It was a magazine, uh, a Sports Illustrated from the 50s. And it was talking about the All-Star Game. And on the cover is two of the greatest hitters of all time that both played at the same time, one National League, one American League. Of course, I'm talking about Stay Usual and Ted Williams. And here's the magazine, and here's what I did with it. It talked about the All-Star Game, and it says the Battle of the Titans. And it's got great pictures of them facing off on the cover of this uh, magazine, and I loved it. And I thought, what better way to do it was to frame this with a uh, with an All-Star card of Stay Mutual and Ted Williams. And this is a really cool display that I made. It's not about the display, but it's just showing off just this great magazine that I did win in an auction house many years ago. Um, another thing that I did was, um, you know, I, I've put a number of sets together. And one thing that I won through... Uh, uh, through an auction house, and I don't remember which one was a lot, it was probably about 40 or maybe 45 cards of a set, which actually happens to be the majority of the set. And what the set is, is the 1963 Fleer. And uh, in this set included some of the big stars, including this Willie Mays, which you can see, which is in great shape and a great card of them. Uh, let's see, there was also a lot of the big names. Um, I was trying to flip through to find them. Uh, both of these guys were in there. Sandy Koufax and Don Drysdale next to each other on that page. Beautiful cards. I love those cards. Um, and I did end up finishing the set, but it wasn't very hard, especially when you had such a big starter set and you had um, had so many of the stars. But this is one of my favorite cards and one of my favorite cards of him, uh, which is the 1963 Fleer Roberto Clemente. And uh, so, yeah, I, f I was able to get this set relatively cheap compared to what it was, especially if you build a set um, it, card by card, and I was able to get this set through an auction house, and I love the set, and uh, I need I need to do a video on this set, just talking about it, its history and stuff, because it's really kind of cool, but yeah, this was another thing I got, was a lot of cards, including a lot of the stars from the 1963 Fleer set. Um, and then another uh, another card that I won is a card that you don't see often, but I really enjoy it. And uh, a lot of people don't know, but I'm a big Stan Musial fan, and I have quite a, a you know a fair amount of Stan Musial cards. I have about all of his playing day cards. And uh, but this is one of my favorite ones. I haven't highlighted on the channel, but it's his Burke Ross card. And um, and it's just a great image of, of him. Of course, it's colorized, and some people don't like them. Um, in fact, I just recently found out this week that these type of cards are cards that my daughter actually does not like. Like, why would you put color on a black and white photo? But uh, but I love it. I love the fact that, you know, he's leaning down to, to, to uh, catch a... Uh, maybe a low throw to first base or whatever. Uh, I love the red piping on it and, the, and his hat. And I really love this set, but I, I, I love this card of Musial. It's, it's a very different type of card. And uh, and I did. I won this card, again, through an auction house. And um, then two more. And one thing I haven't talked about much in my collecting life and experience is is my autographs. And I don't, um, I don't have tons and tons like a like some guys but I do have some really good ones now I did do a video on this one and it was a baseball and I'll show it off and uh it was one of my earliest videos I did if you want to go back and check it out um but this is a Joe DiMaggio signed baseball if you go back and look at my ar archives of a video called um the accidental victory or something like that I accidentally won this Joe DiMaggio baseball and it's kind of a funny story about how I 
how I ended up, uh, you know, winning the bid and then and then buying it or whatever. But go back and watch the video if you want the full story. But this was great, and uh, and I was really into auction houses when I was trying to get um, baseball signed by Hall of Famers. And that leads me to the last item that I want to talk about today. And um, here's the thing about this item. Um, not only is it one of those items that I've never talked about on, uh, on YouTube, uh, it's also an item that very few of my even closer friends within YouTube even know that I have this. So this may be a surprise to some of you guys. But this auction came out of, I actually still have the auction. This was a mile high. It's the only thing I ever bid on and won in a mile high auction. I really like their auctions. And one of the things I liked about uh, auction houses is they, you know, you can get these color, um, uh, color, uh, magazines, you know, talking about the auction and it's just great, great pictures of the cards or great pictures of the items. And, and I had a number of these things because they were free and it was kind of like free stuff in the mail is cool. And, uh, you know, it was a lot of dream shopping, but, but I remember when I got this one, particularly I liked it because, you know, it had a huge picture of Clemente on the front and, uh, and even the back has got this great, uh, ad that was, that was for sale. And this auction was from November of 2016. So it's been, it's been, uh, almost well, you know, seven and a half years or whatever since this came out. But um, but there was an item in here that was like my dream item. And I thought, there's no way I'll ever own this, uh, let alone this particular one that was in here. But it just so happened that they had two very, very similar items uh, ending at the same time at this auction. And this is actually could be a good strategy for winning an auction. Um, because what you may do is you may end up splitting the 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 um the bidders in between two different camps of well I want you know choice A or choice B so I had to guess which one was going to go for less now uh just to be upfront and honest the item that I won was um I, I did win it and I'm going to show it to you in a second here but this is the most money I have ever paid for anything in my entire collection in my entire life and I got to be honest I'm not sure I'm even going to match this. Now, um, I did this through a lot of planning, <clears throat> a lot of selling little things. I, I sacrificed and I kept thinking like, you know, what if I took this pile of cards that I really, really like and I sold these and then put it towards this one, you know, sort of white whale item. And uh, and I had to justify selling cards that I really, really like to be able to get this. But this item wasn't even, it wasn't even a... Uh, it wasn't even a card. So, uh, but I did. I saved and I I scratched pennies and I did anything I could to get up a chunk of money. And when I put in my bid, uh, I, you know, I didn't play games and up my bid and I'm going to do this. I was like, well, this is what it would cost. This is what I have. And if this is what I would end up paying minus the shipping, minus the tax, minus the, the buyer's premium. And so this is the max I could possibly bid. And I put that in and like, it's either going to go or it's not. But man, I was hoping it would go. Well, uh, like I mentioned, there was two items that were very similar in the same auction. And I kind of hoped that one was not going to get as much attention as the other one. And uh, and I was lucky and I was absolutely right. So as I'm looking at this page, it's one of the reasons I still have this auction catalog. Is it's really cool to read the description of the item. But um, here's the page <clears throat> that the item is on. So you can see it's a baseball and it's an autograph signed baseball. Um, but question is, is which one was it? Uh, which one did I win? Well, I'm going to tell you that the one that I won is directly in the center, um, which is this one right here. And if you can read it, um, it's a team ball from 1966 from the Pittsburgh Pirates, including none other than Roberto Clemente. And, uh, and I don't show this off very much. Uh, this is probably one of my most prized possessions. But here is my 1966 Pittsburgh Pirates team ball. And very clearly, you can see, sign, and it's kind of tough with the light, but right there on the edge is a beautiful signature of the great one, Roberto Clemente. And I am so tickled every time I see this in my collection, every time I know that I have this, because I don't have anything that comes close to this. Um, that's not probably true, but I know how much I went through to be able to just scrape and save and, and buy, or not buy, but sell, and just everything I possibly could to get to my maximum amount of money. And uh, I'll even tell you, because you could go back and find out what you want, but I won this all in. It was $825, and I have never, ever spent anywhere near that on another item in my collection, and I have some amazing things, and time has changed a lot of values of my stuff. I don't understand that, but I have never spent anywhere close to $800 on anything, but everything all in, and I was able to win this, and the reason that this one didn't go for as much is because the ball on one edge has got this orange blemish on it, 
Uh, it covers some of the signatures. I mean, you can still read them, but they're definitely not as good. But that does not affect this beautiful image of Roberto Clemente and that amazing signature he had. And to think that Roberto Clemente held this ball in his hand and signed it. And, uh, and, and now it's in my collection for me to enjoy, for me to share with you guys, for me to show people that have come over to my house so I can be, look and see. It's just incredible to me. So anyway, this is one of my most prized possessions. It's one of those things I just I can't believe I own this item. And, uh, and I just, I don't know, I decided to share it with you today. So you know, if you if you are, are stuck in that rut of eBay, 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 or I go to card shows and card shows and card shows and wonder what else is out there, start looking into auction houses. There are tons of them. There are plenty of places that you can go find, uh, you know, are they credible or not? And I have never really had a negative uh, experience with any of them. Now, I wasn't ever bidding, you know, multiple hundreds of dollars on items. I just happened to on this one item. Um, but most of the stuff that I showed you, um, not the DiMaggio ball, but everything else was, was under $100, including the 63 Fleer starter set, um, was probably 75 bucks, which is incredible if you think about the fact that you could get that much star power uh, for that amount of money. But you, you just do your research, and it's like... Um, well, it's like throwing mud on a wall. Occasionally it'll stick. And and that's what I used to do was I would put out auctions and, and hits and bids and stuff. And I wasn't so focused on one item at a time. It was kind of like spread out like buckshot out there or birdshot trying to get out there to say like, well, something's going to go and something might go. And, uh, and finally I would end up winning stuff. And I had some really, really neat items. I still have some really cool stuff. And as I was going through trying to remember, well, what is it that I won an auction? Man, I can't remember every single thing, but I know that these five items that I showed today, I won through auction houses. I'm so happy to have every one of them in my collection. And I'm so happy to share that with you today. So get out there and enjoy the hobby. Look for all different ways to, to enjoy your hobby. Look for other ways that you can find aspects to, um, to find things and to purchase things or to sell things or to meet people or to do whatever. Make this hobby deeper and richer for you by doing the experiences that you can do and just reliving the tales that you have. But anyway, enough about all that. I appreciate the time you guys are spending. And like always, you guys be good.